Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the entire spectrum of British steam locomotives. We're going to be looking at the very weakest and also the very strongest and of course everything in between. <laughs> Most people know what those little numbers on the cabs of British Railways locomotives mean, but occasionally I do get comments asking what those are for, so I thought I would start today's video by explaining what those mean, and then later on, that's the main part of the video, I'm going to be showing examples from each of those numbers, or classifications as we'll call them after I've explained, and we'll see how they compare to each other, and hopefully if we start from the bottom and work up, we'll see the baby locomotives grow into gigantic ones. I think it should be quite interesting. Okay, so the little numbers, those are known as power classifications, and there's a whole spectrum of them, and they just give the administrators of the railways some idea of the power of a locomotive so that they can make the right decision, so they can choose the right engine for the relevant jobs. Okay, so it's a spectrum, it starts down at zero, that's the weakest end, and it goes all the way up to nine, that's the strongest end, and of course there are all the numbers in between. There's also a suffix usually with these numbers, so it might be followed by a P or an F. The P, of course, stands for passenger, so that's a loco that will haul passenger trains. The F stands for freight, so same with freight. And you might also get no suffix or an MT suffix, and that just stands for mixed traffic. That means the locomotive can do both. And that's it. It's very, very simple, but it's not always explained, is it? It's not a system that's really in use anymore. I think when the diesels took over, it was more or less abolished, and it's certainly not in use today, although most people are familiar with it because Hornby, for instance, they do put the classification on the back of their steam locomotive boxes, even if the loco inside is not a British Railways locomotive. So I think I've managed to find one locomotive of each power classification, zero through nine. I don't think there are any higher than nine, although if there are, the comment section will definitely be the place to find it in this video. I have stuck with passenger today, uh, so they're all going to be P locomotives. For the most part, there's a couple of mixed traffic in there, and there's one F, I'm sure you can guess what that's going to be. But the idea being I might do this again one day with freight, and we'll see how it compares. But for now, let's get started. We're going to start down at zero with this locomotive. Let's talk about it. So of course this is the beautiful Terrier, and actually incidentally I do think the BR Black is one of the least attractive Terrier liveries but it does have the 0P classification on the side, which I thought was important. This is actually a bit larger than I was expecting. I was a bit surprised when I rediscovered that the Terrier was a 0P, but the number does not lie. And today I've decided to match the size of the rakes of coaches with the power classification. So I think the three early pre-grouping coaches is the perfect companion for the little Terrier here. I was also surprised to see them listed as a 0P because I'm pretty sure I've seen videos in real life of them hauling freight and stuff, but yeah, I think that's the thing with the classifications. I don't think they were concrete. The Terriers in the BR era might mainly have done passenger work, but there's probably nothing to have stopped them doing freight as well. So there you have it, the very bottom end of the spectrum. Of course, this is a very ancient design of locomotives, so back when it was first produced, this might have been considered more powerful. But bear in mind, by the time the Terriers became part of the BR fleet, they were many, many, many decades old. So there we go, I think that's the Terrier done with. Let me show you the next loco. So here comes number two then. Let's get this in the middle of the shot. Easier said than done. So this is an absolute beauty. This is known as the Midland 1P from Backman, although it's not in a British Railways livery, so it doesn't have the classification on the side or anything, but I don't think anyone will complain about my choice of this one. Now, as you can see, this is considerably larger than the Terrier was, to the point where I'm surprised it is only a 1P, but it is another pre-grouping locomotive. Uh, so I have set it up with just a couple of coaches, but these are much larger, slightly more modern coaches, as you can tell. But of course, this is nothing like the other locos that are going to be coming up today. It's still tiny by most standards. It's also a tank engine, of course. You do tend to find that. It's quite rare to find uh, tender engines of the lower power classifications, but there are a few. There are a few. Not sure if there are any zero classified tender engines, although there might be a few. Either way, let's not talk about other locos. The Backman Johnson 1P. Absolutely beautiful. Let's take a look at 2P, and there's only one possible choice for this one. 
So this is a real classic. Of course, it is the 2P. And this is in an S&DJR livery, and yet it still has the 2P on the side, which just shows it's not just British Railways that use this system. And it also appears that the LMS used it quite extensively as well. Quite a lot of their locos had the classification on the side. And this is, in fact, an LMS locomotive natively, although, obviously, this is in the Prussian blue from the S&DJR. So it's a 2P. This is the first tender engine of the day, and I've given it a rake to match. So we're up to three coaches now, as you can tell. And again, slightly larger, I would say. With the tender, it's obviously considerably larger. I would have said the Johnson 1P was a larger loco on its own. But in terms of power classification, the 2P is the most powerful we've seen so far. And I'm a huge fan of the 2P. I really, really like them. I've got a few models of 2Ps. There's this one. Um, this is the Hornby slash Dapple version. And there's also an old Triang 2P that existed as well, although that wasn't very good. To be honest though, none of the 2Ps on the market are particularly detailed or anything, so if any manufacturer made a new one, I would be super, super happy with that. So there you have it then, the first three locos, a 0P, a 1P and a 2P. And I think this is super cool because there is a clear progression there, isn't there? Now I know that stands to reason and that's completely as it should be, but I did not take the size or anything into account. I didn't choose them so that they would naturally grow. I literally just went by the power classification. So the fact that you've got such a beautiful growth here, not just in length, but also in height as well. Look at that, look how perfect that is. Yeah, that is really cool and impressive to me. So there are only three there. There are 10 in total, of course. So I think I need to get cracking and I will show you the next ones. Are you ready for a nice 3P then? Here we go. I uh, bet you didn't expect to see this one. Yeah, to be fair, there are loads to choose from for every single loco today. <laughs> People always ask, why didn't you run this, this and this in a running session? Well, frankly, because there are hundreds and hundreds of locos and I'm only going to be running 10 today. So yeah, this is a D11, a very, very unusual design. To me, this just looks like a 2P, but on steroids, it just looks thicker and fatter, like it's been at the gym or something, doesn't it? So this loco is definitely going to carry on that progression that we've seen quite beautifully. And uh, because this is a pre-grouping loco, and it did eventually go to become part of the LNER before it was part of British Railways, so I've given it some ex-LNER coaches. I think we're going to be getting through quite a few different coaches today. Now again, the British Railways Black isn't the nicest livery on these. I've got a great central, so the pre-grouping version, and that is far, far nicer. But of course, that doesn't have the classification on the side. And I, I suppose, where possible, I'm going to choose locos that do have that today. Uh, but yeah, I suppose, otherwise, if I was running a D11, I would always choose the great central one, because it's the nicest looking. So at least this way, my BR Black D11 gets a turn. So yeah, and it's nice as well, as you can see. It's not bad by any means. It's not an ugly brute, is it? So there you go, a 3P. All right, so I gave you a bit of an oddball for 3P. So for 4P, I'm showing you exactly what I know you want to see. So this is the beautiful LMS 4P. Back to tank engines again, of course, but this is a much, much beefier tank engine than the ones we've seen already. And it's got a bit of a train to match. So again, another reasonably large four coach train. Looks pretty decent. I don't know, when I think of 4P, this is the locomotive I think of. Again, there might have been quite a few 4P classified locos, but when I was working my way down the list, this is the loco that popped into my head. So that's the one it's going to be. Uh, an LMS design, as you can see, I believe this is a Fowler 4P, is it not? And I think it is probably larger than the D11 overall, isn't it? Or at least the loco of the D11. This is a Hornby model then, not the greatest in the world. There are horrible things really mechanically to service. Always trouble with the pickups for some reason, difficult to get them to connect. But when you do get everything in that sweet spot, they are beautiful runners. And I think this is a great ambassador for the 4P classification. So there you go, the Fowler 4P. What other loco could I possibly have chosen? So for a 5P, I've had quite a job. Now, obviously, there are tons of locos to choose from with a power classification of 5, but they're all 5 MTs, they're all mixed traffic. I didn't actually manage to find one that was just a 5P, so I've gone with this. This is the Hughes Crab, another LMS design, actually. I've gone for this because, quite obviously, the livery is designed with passengers in mind. And if you just look, you might not be able to see this, but on top of the cab, it's classified as a 5P or a 4F. So as a freight locomotive, it didn't quite make the grade to be a 5 classified. 
but for passengers, somehow it is. So maybe passengers would be required to go on a diet or something. I don't know. But yes, this is the closest I've been able to get. If you can think of a 5P that you know I have in my collection, uh, then you have my permission to slap me on the wrist in the comments. But there we go. And a slightly larger train as well to match the slightly higher power classification. There you go. And so this is a Backman Crab locomotive, very elegant as you can see. It almost would be criminal to hook up a freight train to this. In a BR Black livery, and Backman have produced those, yeah, it looks perfectly at home with a freight train, but I'd never want to do that with this Crimson Lake version. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a bit naughty to include a mixed traffic loco in there, but I've done it and it does look all right with coaches, doesn't it? In fact, I'm pretty sure that was the idea, given the livery. So there you go. That is the 5P, sort of. So here's another look at this fantastic progression that we've got going on here. It's a wonderful effect, isn't it? It's great how well that's worked out. So let's see there. We've got six locos. There are still four left to do, I believe. So let's see if we can carry this progression on. And I will show you the 6P. Yeah, so I'm pretty much resigned to the fact that most of today's locos are LMS ones. I haven't done that on purpose, that's just the way it's worked out really. The best examples have been LMS. So for the 6P, I've got the Jubilee. And yeah, you can tell, can't you? This is definitely the largest loco we've had so far. 6P, so I've got five Pullmans, I think. I think for the, uh, the 7P, I'll have to add at least one or two more coaches. So yeah, this is a Backman Jubilee. This is one of, we're sort of talking ultimate designs now. Uh, I think we've left pre-grouping far behind. You don't tend to get pre-grouping locos that were this powerful. I think back in the day, they just didn't have the need or the technology to produce such massively powerful locos. So I'm pretty sure from now on in the video, we're talking 1923 onwards at the very, very earliest. I would have thought most of these would be 30s, 40s, or later on, even 50s designs. Yes, a little bit of a, a clue there. Okay, 6P, very nice, good old Jubilee. Let's move on. So my choice for 7P was initially going to be the Royal Scott, but of course that's LMS again, isn't it? So I want to try and give some of the other railways a chance. So I've gone with this, the Lord Nelson class, one of the largest 460s I think ever produced. Very, very powerful things. Um, the model, in fact, is a Hornby model. It's really light, like noticeably so when you lift the thing up. And so it's not that great a puller. So I'm hoping it's gonna do a decent job of hauling these coaches. I think I've got seven coaches here. Um, if it was on the outside line going directly up Gordon's Hill, I think that would have been a real struggle, but it might just about do this. But anyway, yes, we're very firmly into 460 10 wheeler territory, as you can tell. Although I believe once we get to the 7P classification, we are sort of talking Pacifics as well. I think the Princess Royal, also from the LMS, I think that was a 7P, wasn't it? So we're talking some of Britain's most powerful locomotives at this point. Not that many that got this high. And uh, when we start talking eights and nines, the amount of choice reduces quite dramatically, actually. So the choice for 8P was quite an easy one. This one popped right into my head again. It is, of course, the Coronation class, the unstreamlined Coronation class. And I point that out because my streamlined Hornby Coronations do have 7P on the side. Uh, this one has 8, so either I'm guessing the locos were sort of improved over time and they were made more powerful, or British Railways and LMS had slightly different ways of classifying, because of course this is in the BR livery, despite being a Crimson Lake loco. So this has got the biggest rake of coaches I have shown so far. How many is on here? I forget. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's eight coaches on here. <laughs> I suppose in real life that wouldn't be a huge load for the Coronations. But yeah, very, very handsome. No doubt this is the largest loco of the day. It's the first Pacific, and it's a very, very large and powerful Pacific at that. Absolute classics, one of the most powerful British locomotives. I believe these are the most powerful British passenger locomotives, which of course makes the 9P a bit of a head scratcher. Uh, you know what I will have had to have done for 9P. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll get these off, we'll put these into the sidings, we'll show the progression, and then we'll have the big letdown of the uh, nine classified loco to finish with, I guess. 
All right, let's do it. Okay, are you ready for this? Wow, take a look. Smallest all the way up to largest. I've had to scooch them across a little bit. But wow, what an amazing, amazing effect. But of course, we only have nine engines here and there needs to be 10. So let's move on and I will show you the final loco of the day. Okay, here it comes now. And yes, of course, it is a 9F. F. <laughs> so it's not ideal. I am guilty of uh, messing up my own rules right at the end. But there are a couple of mitigating circumstances. First of all, I mean, this was the very final locomotive British Railways ever built. So I guess it's a fitting loco to end with. Also, because this was such a special locomotive, it did do quite a lot of passenger work, despite being called a 9F. Uh, none of the other class really did, but this one was painted into a passenger livery, and it did do passenger trips. So that's my reason. Reject it, if you will. I think that's fair enough, uh, but that's what's going on with this one. And, as you can see, to finish off, I've got coaches from all different walks of life on this train. It's never, never something I do. I think it looks hideous, personally. <laughs> but just for a change, I've done it for today. Now, if you ask me, even though this is considered a power classification 9, it's nowhere near as huge and chunky looking as, say, the Coronations or possibly even the Lord Nelson class. Uh, so, you know, sheer size and bulk isn't necessarily everything. It does, however, have the most driving wheels of any Locos that I've showed today which obviously will contribute some to the power of the Loco. But yeah, there we go, the ultimate Loco to finish off with, the beautiful 9F. Let's put it at the end of my little Barry scrapyard scene and uh, just take one last look at all of the engines together. There you have it then, folks. Yeah, I did not expect this to be such a good demonstration, but it did work out pretty well, didn't it? So I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you've got any other ideas for videos like this or videos not like this, whatever the case may be, please do comment down below. Also, let me know what you thought. But for now, that's all there is for the moment. So I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right. Cheers, everybody.